Okay, guys, I'm recording the homework. No one stayed with me today, but that's fine. All right, so I'm doing these um, math pieces, the fraction tiles. So I'm going to take 7 eighths, and I'm going to take away 3 fourths. So here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 eighths, and I'm taking away 3 fourths, right? I'm going to be left with this right here. So hopefully, right, when you look at the picture, I hope you guys can see, I'm going to be left with 1 eighth. Right, that's my one eighth picture piece. Right, so all they're doing here is taking seven eighths. I can't really take away one fourth from eighths unless I change my fourths and cut them in half. Right, and then I'll have one eighth and one eighth, which is two eighths. And two eighths is the same as one fourth. I hope you can tell if I divide the top by two and the bottom by two. Right, I'm just dividing by one, and any number divided by one is equal to the same number. So I'm going to have the same number. It'll just have an 8 on the bottom. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So hopefully you guys can see 2 eighths is the same as 1 fourth. All right, I'm going to find each difference using the fraction tiles. Right, so I'm just using the fraction tiles here. So I have 7 eighths take away one half. So hopefully you can see my seven eighths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my one half. So I'm taking away my one half. How many will be left? Three eighths. And you know I have to do that real math ways, right? So I'm going to say one half, I'm going to turn it into eighths. One half is equal to something amount of eighths. Right, I could see it right here in my picture. One, two, three, four eighths. Right, I can do that with math too if I multiply the bottom times four and the top times four. One times four is four, two times four is eight. So really I'm having seven eighths, I'm taking away four eighths. Right, and we're good at doing this now, hopefully. I know eight, eight, eight. Seven take away four is three. I have the same answer. I'm just double checking my answer here. So now we have two thirds, right? Here's my two thirds, taking away one fourth. Right? I'm pretending I'm taking it away. How much would be left? One, two, three, four, five twelfths. Right? I can see my five twelfths there. So my answer is going to be five twelfths. I'm going to double check this with my math. I'm going to say two thirds take away one-fourth is equal to, I don't know. So I'm going to move my problem down here. So I'm going to take two-thirds and I'm going to turn it into twelfths. So to turn a three into a twelve, I multiply it times four. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to move my problem right here, right? I'm moving this here. Four times three is 12 on the denominator. Four times two is eight. Right over here, same thing. I'm gonna move it down to here, but I need to turn this into a 12. So I'm gonna multiply it times three. And since I multiply the bottom times three, I multiply the top number times three, the numerator times three. Three times four is 12. Three times one is three. Now I can subtract. 12, 12, 12. Eight take away three is five. Right, I'm just double checking, make sure I get the same answer. On to the back, word problems. Noah bought one half pound of candy to share with his friends. They ate three eighths of a pound of the candy. How much candy does Noah have left? How nice is Noah sharing his candy with his friends? And it's, oops, I'm gonna have one half of it he had. He had a half a pound of candy he bought. And he gave three eighths of a pound to his friend. So how much of the pound is he of the half a pound is he gonna have left? So I'm gonna take my one half and I'm gonna find an equivalent fraction with an eight as the denominator so that I can subtract. So two turns into an eight by multiplying it times four. And if I multiply the denominator times four, I have to multiply the numerator times four. Right, because 4 over 4 is the same as 1. So I'm really taking 4 over 4 and multiplying it times 1 half. 
So it would be the same as me multiplying 1 times 1 half. And we know anything times 1 is the same number. So really all I'm doing is just changing this number to make it easier to work with. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4. So now instead of having 1 half take away 3 eighths, I'm going to have 4 eighths take away 3 eighths. And 4 eighths take away 3 eighths, I have 8, 8, 8. And I have 4 take away 3 is 1. So 1 eighth of a pound of candy he has left. Here's Mr. Crowen. Crowen. Crowen? Gave his students three-fourths of an hour to study for a test. After one-third hour, he played a review game for the remaining time. How much time did Mr. Cronin spend playing the review game? All right, so here is Mr. Cronin. Right? This is just a weird problem. So here is my one hour. Right, he let them, he told them, all right, you guys can study for three-fourths of an hour um, for your test. So they're going to have a test. He told them, I'm going to give you three-fourths of an hour to study for this test. All right, sorry, I just rewrote it. Okay, so he had three-fourths of an hour, right? Here's his one hour. He's giving them time to study for their test. But so, but then they're also saying that after one third of the hour had passed, he maybe changed his mind or changed it up so that they could play a review game. Right, so they're going to play a review, they're going to, this is the time they really studied for their test. Here they're studying, they're doing a review game, right? So I want to know how much time of this hour, because they still had all the way to here, right, to study. They still had more time that they could study from here to here. So, um, sorry, this was this sorry this was the study. The yellow was the time they studied one third of an hour, and then he spent all this time um, review, playing a game. So you can see it's more right. I can't really divide this up equally. So what I do is I'm going to convert my numbers to twelfths because I know three and fourths can be converted into twelfths. Right? I can take my fourths and I can easy make that into twelfths. And same with my third piece. If I have a third piece, I can turn that into twelfths also. So now I can compare them because it's really hard to compare these fractions when they're unequal lengths. I, I just need to do something different. So he gave them three fourths of an hour to study. After one-third of their quiet studying time or whatever they were doing, he decided to play a review game. So how much time did they spend studying, playing their review game? So he gave them one-third of that hour, right? He gave them only this much time to study, and then they played a game, which is also review. All right, so I'm going to turn these into twelfths. Uh, I'll do it right here. I'll use this pace, place for this problem, so I'm going to do it right here below. So I'm going to take three-fourths, and I'm going to turn it into twelfths. And I'm going to take one-third, and I'm going to turn them into twelfths. So to turn four into twelve, I multiply it times three, times three. So I will have nine twelfths. To change my one-third into twelfths, I'm going to multiply it times four. So times four times four, four twelfths. So now I'm going to have 9 twelfths, and I'm going to take away 4 twelfths. And I will have 12, 12, 12, and I will have 9, take away 4 is 5. 5 twelfths of an hour. They got to play the game, the review game. So here's Mrs. Washer filled the gas tank of her car. She used two-thirds of the tank of gasoline while driving to the beach. She used another one-sixth of the tank of driving to her hotel. How much gasoline is left in the tank? Right, so another one of these ones where I'm taking my same tank, but I'm dividing it up two different ways. So here's her full tank of gas. We pretend like she had the whole tank of gas, and she used some of it. So maybe I'll, I'll right, she used this much and this much. 
So she has this much left from going to the gas. But she also, on the same tank, right, she also needed to go to her hotel room. So she used one-sixth of it going to her hotel room, right? So this doesn't really measure, I, I can't figure, add that in there and figure out how much she had left in gas. So we're going to change our numbers around, right? And I could just turn this, it's thirds, I could turn it into sixes. I'm going to go. Now I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So she used one, two, three, four, four, six of the tank of gas plus one-sixth of the tank of gas. She is five-sixths of her tank of gas. So hopefully you should see she can only have one-sixth tank of gas left. So let's do our math. Take away one-sixth equals, I'm gonna change my two-thirds into sixes. I'm gonna do it down here. So I feel like I'm getting too messy for you guys and you might be getting lost of where she's doing this. So I'm just changing this number to an equivalent fraction by multiplying it by one so to multiply it by 1, I'm really going to multiply it by 2 over 2. And this is, kind of, this is how you do multiplying fractions. I just go straight across. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. And we will learn that starting on Monday. All right, so, or earlier. I think I might do this earlier. So, right, all I'm really doing is multiplying this fraction by 1. Because any number times 1 is the same number. So all I'm, that's all I'm doing. So now I'm going to move this number back up here into my problem. Instead of two-thirds, now I'll have four-sixths. And now I'll take away one-sixth. And my answer is three-sixths tank of gas left. I don't know why I thought she was going to have one-sixth of tank of gas left. She should only, what did I do wrong here? Yep, yeah, okay, sorry. So, she used another one-sixth of the tank dry giving to her hotel. I wasn't supposed to subtract here, right? I was adding. She used this much gas, and then she used this much gas. So, all together, she used this much gas. Five-sixths of a tank of gas. So, how much tank is left, how much gasoline is left in the tank? So now here's my other part of this problem. This is how much gas she used. I needed to add them together, right? She used four-sixths of her tank plus one-sixth of her tank. She used five-sixths of her tank. But her whole tank only holds six-sixths of the tank, right? That would be her whole tank. So now I'm going to subtract how much she used, and my answer is going to be one-sixth of a tank left of gasoline that she has left. Sorry, I just, blah, 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 you know, but I make mistakes too. I was just looking at it wrong. And good thing I did that beforehand because I could see once I did that, oh, she's going to use one six. She's only going to have one six yet left. So I'm like, wait, what? But then I saw where my mistake was. And it's always a good idea to double check it, right? Draw a model and check it this way and double read your problem. All right, starting from her hotel. Angie walked two-thirds of a mile along the beach in one direction. She turned around and walked half a mile toward her hotel. How much farther does she need to walk to get back to the hotel? So Angie, she walked two-thirds of a mile so far, right? Here's Angie. She starts here. She walks this far and ends here. This is two-thirds of a mile. She's going to walk back only one half, then she's going to just take a little break or something, sit down. And then she still has to go this amount. So this is what I want to know. How much is this? I know all of this distance is two-thirds, right? I'm going to take away how much she walked back, and then I should have how much is left. So she walked two-thirds of a mile. Then she walked back one half of a mile. So now she only needs to walk that much more. And how much is that? So my three and my two, I'm going to turn them into sixes. I'm going to turn my three into a two by multiplying it to a six. I'm going to turn my three into a six by multiplying it times two. So I need to multiply by two there also. I'm going to turn my two into a six by multiplying it times three. 
So I need to multiply here times 3 also. I'm going to rewrite my pro problem now so it's nice and neat. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 2 is 6. Now I'm going to subtract 1 sixth of a mile. Angie needs to walk back to get to her hotel.